I am Apostle Gideon. I want to share quickly with you 10 lessons I have learned in my 10 years in the ministry and working with the Lord. Hello, if you are new, kindly consider subscribing as well as turning on the bell for notification. We upload new videos every week aimed at transforming your work with the Lord. God bless you. Welcome to Kingdom Matters, where we say, let the light of Christ shine through you. Now, into the message. For the first two years of these 10 years, I was a leader of a fellowship I started on campus while I worked with my father in the Lord. The next four years had me pastoring a church and leading the fellowship. And this last four years till present, till as I'm talking to you, has seen me pastoring and leading an ever-growing ministry of churches, fellowship and many ministries offshoot here in Ghana. In all these years of working with the Lord, I have had to learn a number of things along the line. In this video, I want to share 10 of the most important things I have learned in these 10 years of ministry. And I believe it is going to bless you if you are one who wants to learn, one who wants to do ministry as God wants you to do, and you are an up and coming minister. The first lesson, number one, don't dry up with time. Many start out in a ministry on fire, but along the line, they lose their vibrancy, their passion, and their interest in the ministry, and consequently fall out of the ministry. They may not necessarily exit the ministry, but a careful watch of their life will show you they are uninterested in the ministry as they did in the beginning. It has just become a formality, something they have to do because they belong to it. This is mainly because the ministry is quite a repetitive work. You will do the same things over and over. So if you don't take care, you will become dispassionate about it. It is about four to five things. Fellowshipping with the Lord or your prayers, visitation, preaching, counseling, and organizing meetings and ceremonies. That's all. With such occupations, one can easily lose the fire and the interest. Over time, you can easily lose the interest over time. Besides this, the ministry is about living and ministering to people. But the people you want to be a blessing to or you are sent to bless can sometimes be very careless towards you, making you want to give up on the work or just fall out of the ministry. On the other side, the people you are ministering to can be so genuine and loving that if you don't take care, you will be attached to them and forsake your fellowship with the Lord. The mindset and attitude that can help you to ever stay fresh is seeing your fellowship with the Lord as the most important thing in your ministerial life. Even more important than the ministry and the people God brings your way. See the ministry as an overflow of your relationship with the Lord and not the bond for your relationship. The relationship you have with the Lord is what gives birth to the ministry and not the otherwise. Learn this. Number two, the younger you are, the more open and zealous people are. But as they grow older in the ministry, they get complacent and unenthusiastic and so they dry up. This is the issue with many ministers. If they will open up to you, they will tell you now they are not as zealous as they used to be. They are no longer eager as they were before. They are now used to praying and studying the word of God. They are, it has become like a norm. They are no, there's no zeal for it. After being in the ministry for a few years, you will know all the tactics for preaching and moving the people and may lose every edge and eagerness to study. Because with or without Bible studies or learning, you will know how to maneuver your way through any congress, so there's no need to worry or fear if you have not studied. Although not immediately recognizable, this attitude will suck all the ministry life in you and make you dry up, so watch out. The people may not realize it, but what I strongly believe is that it is going to cut you off from the best of God. So make sure that you maintain your zeal over the years. Don't let the zeal dry out. Number three, don't fight anyone. Don't make ministerial enemies. This may seem obvious on the surface, but it is not that simple. First, you will be surprised when you set off in the ministry that ministers whom you expect to know better and ministers you expect to do better are not what you think. There are always enough ministers to attack you, insult you, and to mistreat you. There are enough of them. Because they feel you are competing with them. Some will feel you are competing with them. Some will feel you are a threat to them. Yes. And there are those who also want to be uh, leaders in every field of ministry. So the moment you show up in their territory, they will come for you. The moment you begin to rise in a ministry, you will make automatic enemies. Understand this. 
it shouldn't surprise you but what you should learn to do is not to make anyone your enemy there will be people whom you will see as brothers who will look down on you oh yes and will try by all means to subdue or succumb you and if you don't yield to that you will become enemies so watch it don't fight anyone number four most people are not deep in their commitment to the lord as you think if you follow them you will backslide one thing i have observed is that most ministers are not as deep as you may think many are just about the shallow things of enjoyment and popularity only a few are truly about the will of god so watch out evil communication will soon corrupt your good morals as well as the good heart you have for the lord it will be corrupted if you don't watch out as good as networking is if all you are about is networking you will soon be diluted by the lukewarmness of the majority and soon you will become like everyone and miss up on the best of god's purpose for you stay in fellowship with the lord more than you network let me say that again stay in fellowship with the lord more than you network the arm of flesh can help you more than god can do so be wise stay with god first before any other person number five money will be your greatest temptation the lord said no one can serve two masters and their names are god and your guess is as good as mine money whether you are an experienced minister or you are an upcoming one you must learn to overcome the desire for money and the things money can achieve money will seek to direct you but you must master it what you minister where you minister who you minister to how you minister and when you minister should all be free from the influence of money money should not decide these things the moment money has a voice in them you have backsliding in your heart from serving god to money and this is what many ministers of god are doing so watch out truly money helps the ministry do much when you have a lot of money you'll be able to do a lot of things but we are not here in the ministry to do what we want we are here to do the will of god so if god has not given it to you you are not supposed to do it if god has not cut you for it your own mechanism to achieve it is unnecessary money has led many out of the will of god so watch it it has corrupted so many people so watch it open your eyes when the ministry is bringing you money and watch whether you are not setting up an agenda for money and refusing to walk in the ways of god Check your motives all the time and make sure your motives are God driven, not money driven. Number six, many people will turn their backs on you. If disloyalty and betrayal is new to you, then you are just starting out in the ministry. Ministry has this duo than anything I have seen. Pastors have been forced out of the ministry and many have had broken hearts depressed over this. So you must beware. Let me be straight with you. There will be so many people who God will bring your way, who will love you even to the point of death. But then there shall be also many people who will be ready to betray you and sell you out like Judas. So don't be surprised when betrayals happen because it surely will. And let me give you a secret. It will come mostly from those whom you love dearly and spend on mostly. Arm yourself with knowledge and be prepared for them. When it happens, pray for the people don't curse them be like the lord jesus christ pray for them don't curse them you make a mistake by cursing the people of god leaving you doesn't mean they have left god so don't curse anybody not being with you again doesn't mean they are not with god they may still be children of god so leave them to god and just focus on the rest of the work hallelujah this leads us to number seven watch your words your words will always come back to you as ministers, our tool for work is our ways. We heal by our ways, we deliver, we build lives by our ways. As good as this sounds, we can also abuse it. So have respect for all the people God brings to you and speak to them in love. Whether you are in the church or you are outside, don't use foul words. By your words, you will be justified and by your words, you shall be condemned. When you are angry, be quiet. Don't just talk carelessly a single miscalculated sentence can ruin the whole work of god in your life so watch it it can hurt your work it can let everybody leave you it can just spoil the whole work so watch it number eight be honest and sincere honesty and sincerity is a virtue missing in many christian circles today so go for it don't tell lies to enhance your image or get people to follow your ministry it won't get you anywhere 
the commonest sin of an average charismatic pastor today is the sin of exaggeration or lies. They are fond of giving testimonies of things that God has never done or never happened. They assume God has done it and they share it. A man with 100 seating capacity church will tell you they have 200 and 500. Some even live the lie. They rent things to prove a point and to let people know that God has been good to them. Don't fall into that trap. Don't lie. Don't exaggerate. Live the life God has given you to live with, with all honesty and with all sincerity. Don't be under pressure to please anyone. Be sincere all throughout. You are not accountable to man. You are accountable to God. That is why you must be sincere and honest. When you stand before the Lord, it will not be about how people saw you. It will be about how God sees you. So go for that. Honesty and sincerity. Number nine, you can start small. Don't seek to start from the mountaintop. Don't see successful ministry as one that has the crowds, the luxurious gadgets, and the big cars. Don't see successful ministry as that. You can start from one corner. Ministry is about what God has called you to do. So wherever he sends you, yield and go. Go to that corner he's calling you for. Start small. You can start it. Only a few people will start big. Most of us will have to start from a corner. So don't be afraid to start from the corner. And that leads us to the final lesson. Obedience. Obedience is what is required by the Lord of the harvest, not your resource. Many are tempted to think the greater your outcome, the greater you are before the Lord. But this is not so. God has graced all of us differently and called us to different things. So it will be unheard of. To think that the same measure for me is the same measure for you. The grace God gave me is not the same grace he gave you. The opportunities he gave me is not the same opportunity he gave you. So don't expect God to require the same things from us. If he gave me five grace for 20 opportunities, I shouldn't think that he will expect the same results from you that he gave 20 grace for 100 opportunities. To whom much is given, much is required. This is the reason you should focus on what you are assigned to do and not to engage in foolish comparisons. Only unwise servants of the Lord compare themselves to other servants. Don't involve yourself in any comparison. Be obedient to what God called you for. 2 Corinthians 10 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves, among themselves are not wise be wise today choose obedience these are the 10 lessons i want to share with you i believe you are blessed let me know what you think in the comment box below let this word stay in your heart if it blessed you and carry out through life even as you walk with the lord and you serve the lord god bless you let the light shine i'll see you in the next powerful video bye bye